Welcome back to the Gazette, our daily rendezvous. Iran and myself are very happy to present you tonight Mr. Chaz Jenkins, who was an outsider of the classical music world about 20 years ago when he was promoting uh, rock artists and uh, techno DJs, <laughs> but who is definitely now a major insider since uh, after uh, uh, promoting and developing uh, um, internet and marketing uh, with the uh, London Symphony Orchestra is uh, doing it for the biggest uh, corporation, you know, corporate uh, corporation, which is uh, Universal, which has uh, three la major labels: the Gramophone, Decca, and Philips. Please welcome Mr. Chad Jenkins. Дорогие друзья, добро пожаловать в нашу ежедневную газету. Центральное событие нашей разговорной части интернет-трансляции с конкурса пианистов. И сейчас прошу приветствовать, любить и жаловать у нас здесь в нашей импровизированной студии мистер Чес Дженкинс, вице-президент группы Universal Music, которая владеет тремя лейблами Decca, Deutsche Grammophon and, uh, and Philips. Of and course. Philips, of yeah. course. Uh, so my first question, Mr. Jenkins, is like, what are you doing here exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Listening well, to the pianist or what else? Well, I mean, I, I've worked for many years for the London Symphony Orchestra and had the pleasure sure. to work with Valery Gurgiev and the Mariinsky at the time. Oh, of course, yeah. Then I well. left the scene for quite a while to go and work for Universal. Um, but I left there last year to actually come back and actually work with the Mariinsky. Because oh, right. they're such a fan fascinating organization um, in, in this world where so many musicians are still dependent, if they want to reach a large audience, on CDs on plastic discs using technology which is 35 years old. Yeah, because of course I forgot to mention that not only he was, uh, you know, very instrumental in creating and developing the label, the London Symphony Orchestra label, but also the Marinsky uh, mm. label, which uh, has released so many fantastic recordings, including uh, Prokofiev concertos with Denis Matsuyev, uh, uh, Chostakovich, Tchaikovsky concerto with Daniel Trifonov, and of course the Ring Cycle, a fabulous Ring Cycle record of the Marinsky. So of course you're here because of the connection with Mr. Gergiev. Yeah. Мистер Чес Дженкинс долгое время руководил менеджерской маркетинговой стороны Лондонского симфонического оркестра. Он основал знаменитый лейбл LSO. И сейчас, в связи с тем, что также долгое время работает с маэстро Валерием Гергием, он отвечает за лейбл Мариинский, на котором были выпущены большое количество огромных записей, и в том числе и все оперы Вагнера, кольцо Нибелунга, и концерты, и симфонии, и так далее, и так далее. И вот, собственно, главный вопрос был, что вы делаете здесь на конкурсе? курсе Чайковского, ну, собственно, связи, творческие связи с маэстро Гергиевым привели сюда, в Москву, Чаза Дженкинса, в эти конкурсные дни. So, do you have any projects related to this competition? I mean, are you going to release CDs, or are you going to do something, or did sign, sign some of the artists to the gramophone, or tell the ENR, ENR director to do so, or what are you doing technically? Well, it was, it was after the last competition, Daniel uh -huh. Trifonov just ran away with the last competition. Yes. And there was such sheer excitement in the music industry. Uh, immediately, Gurge Valery Gurgiev decided he wanted to make the first proper recording with Daniel. Yes. And so, quite literally, the Mariinsky label, literally a few weeks after the competition, That was a Tchaikovsky uh, concerto, number yeah. one. Concerto yes. with Trifonov. With oh. Trifonov, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, this time the world has moved on. We're four years further on, we're four years further on in terms of digital, actually reaching even more people. And so I, I think it almost comes down to, is there really any relevance in terms of producing a record, a CD these days? I mean, the actual audience for these performances is totally astonishing internationally. And I'd love to see, love to be able to help, and I'm sure Valeri would work with the musicians from the competition to actually help them with their career going forwards. One of the unique things about this competition is it's not just about a winner. Everybody who makes it into these final rounds of the competition really has the potential to really have a phenomenal global career ahead of them. They are that standard. Even, even those who wasn't allowed into the final round. <laughs> yeah. no, so basically, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to give them uh, you know you're going to sign them digitally for at least you know. Uh, <laughs> to promote them on the internet? Or what are you going to do with all those guys well, you mentioned? You know, the, the the internet and digital reaches far greater audiences than CDs do. Yeah, of course, of already. course. We know that. I mean, it's been ten, over 10 years now yes. since iTunes launched. iTunes will practically relaunch just tomorrow uh -huh. when they launch Apple Music globally, the streaming service. And, you know, working with these, working with par wonderful partners such as iTunes, but then also looking at all the other digital platforms, it gives, the op gives people around the world the opportunity to experience the talent of these sort of musicians. So basically you're going to give them a, sign, them, sign a deal with them, so in order to develop them on the internet, 
of via Deutsche Grammophon or Decca or Marinsky or what exactly? Potentially, I mean, you, in the future, people have the opportunity to develop themselves. That's what the Mariinsky did. Right. The Mariinsky for years recorded under the name Kirov predominantly, uh -huh. its old name for Philips, for many other record yes, companies, of course, yeah. but took the decision seven years ago that really to actually, if you really want to reach a really global audience, you do it yourself. Because only you at your heart, 12 months a year, 365 days a year, really believe and want to promote your music and want people to hear your music. And the Mariinsky is a wonderful example of this because there's probably no other arts institution on the world, in the world which excels at opera, ballet and classical music, really truly excels in all That's three. That's for sure. That's for sure. And tours internationally relentlessly throughout the year. But still you only reach a small number of the people who are interested in these art forms. Whereas if you actually embrace the internet and put your content online, you can reach a far greater audience. And that is the future for musicians like this. It's using, using services such as, like, as iTunes, Spotify, and a whole host of other services around the world to actually engage with audiences and let people experience the quality of the music. So you don't work exclusively for Universal at the moment? No. All oh, right, so I got it. Now. I got it. Okay, okay. You're here as a mercenary. No, You're here as a mercenary. Oh yeah, complete mercenary for music. That's a wonderful way to put it. Mercenary. Right. I'm going to put that on my business cards. Yeah. Mercenary for music. Well, you give me copyright because uh, you know, even on internet there's some copyright issues. Кстати, Чел Дженкинс, человек, который несколько лет, ну уже около десяти лет назад, даже чуть больше, запустил в интернет программу свободного скачивания классической музыки. И то, что вот сейчас цифровые технологии развиваются, человек во многом ответственен за это на самом деле очень важное для нашей жизни решение. А связи мистера Дженкинса и Валерой Гергиевым это, конечно же, уникальные связи с, и с лейблом Мариинским, и вообще с удивительным институтом, который мы называем Мариинский театр, который включает в себя и концерты, и классической музыки, и оперу, и балет. Это действительно уникальный случай в мире. И еще был вопрос по поводу, что, собственно, кого ищет здесь на конкурсе мистер Дженкинс. Но, ну, разумеется, талант тех исполнителей, которые через вот этот лейбл Мариинский, через взаимодействие с Валерием Гергиевым могут получить в общем, выход на самый uh, широкий мировой уровень. So, are you completely cured from your uh, techno and uh, electronic music past, or do you still go around and uh, check out the clubs? I don't, I'm not often in nightclubs. I still <laughs> listen to the music, yeah. and I think it's sort of important to do that. It's very yeah. rare to find somebody, uh, uh, anybody in the world, who only listens to one type of music. And in many ways, you know, having worked for the music industry for so long. Uh -huh. You know, the music industry likes to package people. You're a classical music fan, you're a jazz fan, you're a country and western fan. And that's not, But you're that's a fan not, of which sort of music? <laughs> all, sorts. All, all sorts. As I think most people are, people have eclectic tastes. Oh, okay. And if you give them the opportunity to experience lots of things, wonderful. But if you force them to go into one place where they can only listen to one sort of music, in sort of like a record store which only stops one type of music, they don't have the chance to really listen yeah. to the range of things which people really enjoy. So I still listen to a bit of dance and electronic music. All right. <laughs> and I'd be surprised if there's many people on stage tonight who don't as well, or listen to of rock course. music. Are yeah. you surprised with so many people? I mean, in the Bolshoi Hall, it's not a surprise at all no. for this competition. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Half of them are probably going to a nightclub afterwards. <laughs> На самом деле мистер Дженкин занимается всеми, всеми направлениями музыки, потому что, собственно, все они присутствуют в нашей жизни, и помимо классических и джаз, и рок, и популярная музыка, и все это составляет нашу окружающую действительность. В общем, что с этим сложно поспорить. So do you have any uh, favorites, you know, so far? I mean, you can you can talk. You're not a member of the jury. You can say, you know, I like this one or this one. It's no... uh, my favorite so far on the piano side is George Lee. George oh. Lee. What do you I like? What do you like about him? It's uh, a number of things. It's a sheer love and exuberance. Uh -huh. he, he displays when he's playing, uh -huh. and literally his finger work is astonishing. Uh -huh. I just uh, dazzled by last night's performance. I heard things in his performance of the Tchaikovsky last night which I've never heard before. He just plays really? things in, in a different way and he's almost responding to the audience, his constant glances at the orchestra and the audience. I find that really fascinating. So what would you do with him? A video clip? Uh, uh, what kind, is, there, is there a new uh, uh, marketing tool now that you're thinking of you know, to, to get you know, one step ahead of what we know so far? I think George could do it all himself. Вот так вот, любимый пианист мистера Дженкинса это Джордж Ли, и как кажется, что Джордж Ли не нуждается в поддержке, поддержке таких мастеров цифровых технологий, как наш гость. Все это Джордж Ли благодаря своей 
потрясающей музыкальности, техничности и той манере, какой он себя способен показывать на сцене, он справится совсем сам.